Welcome back to First 15 and uh, so much to reflect on on this week's show. Uh, in fact, it's a little bit of the Italian job today. We've got Carlo Del Favo, former Italy player, former Italy coach, and Nick Mallet as well as we look back to last weekend and talk about the other internationals that took place, some wonderful results there as well. Some very big results and of course we look forward to this big encounter coming up to round off the Springboks here at Principality Stadium in Cardiff this weekend. We're also going to be chatting to Dylan Sage about the Blitz Box so that's also coming your way but we'd like to know from you considering we're at the end of the 2017 international season for the Springboks have they improved since 2016 if they do get a win this weekend that makes it three from four on this tour and a three match win series in the middle of the year but would you consider everything else that happened in Springbok rugby this year including that Ireland loss a success Well, there was a little bit, uh, I suppose, of uncertainty before the box took on Italy this past weekend, knowing what happened the last time these two teams faced each other. They did manage, though, to bounce back. It was, a, I suppose, a one-sided score at the end of the day. There are a couple of things that we can criticize for either team. But, Nick, your impressions after that. Um, in studio, I heard you say that you still feel that the other uh, Northern Hemisphere teams can still consider themselves uh, to be better than where the South Africans are now. Yeah, I, I think it was a job well done. First of all, let's talk about the game and uh, a narrow pitch and uh, you know, shocking conditions getting worse as the game progressed. So direct play was, uh, was the way in which uh, the box had to play and they did it effectively. Uh, what was uh, very encouraging was uh, the way in which they managed to, when they did get into the 22, especially with driving malls, we put, under, we put them under a lot of pressure and scored a couple of tries. Uh, uh, Bongi's try and Kitsov's try were excellent, was excellent, were excellent. And then on top of that, uh, that little high cross kick there, which uh, Fenter got, got on the end of. This, uh, this was a lovely, actually, uh, phase of play where uh, the, 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 the box was early on in the game and we held on to the ball through quite a few phases and then uh, a little half gap by Pollard and a very good pick and go. But look at this driving ball. I mean, last year, you'll remember that uh, the, the Italian pack was very, very effective at stopping our driving malls. And uh, in this game, we managed to get, get across. This was a, a pre-call uh, from the outside winger, I think. Uh, very badly judged by the fullback, Italian fullback, and uh, Fenter comes on the end of it. But in the rain like that, guys, it was, uh, it was the way to play. We did, it, we, we did the job properly. Here's another driving mall. What was a little bit disappointing was 255 tackles made by South Africa to 120 yard from, uh, from, from Italy, which meant that Italy had the ball for long periods of time. It just were so blunt they couldn't do anything. It's not it. the way that we've been going throughout this tour. I mean, we, we started against Ireland. We, we couldn't really play expensively. They didn't last year. They snuffled us, particularly with their defensive and quick line speed. Comes to France, you know, it now becomes an edgy game because it's a must win. So you tend to be much more conservative. And going to this game, we were conservative. There's no question about that. So Even with the selection. Isn't the way we've yes. gone? We're trying to use that brutal mentality as opposed to a bit of the, the sleight of hand. Bit of well, gal. Bit of gal. <laughs> well, let's uh, take the opportunity to say a big welcome to the um, uh, former Italian uh, player, um, Carlo Dofa. Second Dofava. Absolutely. Forward. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful to have you in the studio. <laughs> we spoke to you on exactly. Skype a while ago, but it's yeah. really good uh, to have you back in studio. And he played for the Falcons in Newcastle too. Yeah. Ah, there's, there's two Newcastle boys side by side. Connection. There we go. But um, Carlo, watching this match, Nick alluded to the fact that it was a, a narrower pitch. Yeah. And the fact that the, they went about it in a more conservative way. Do you expect that when yeah. there's not that much space to move around? Definitely you would. I mean, even just looking up, leading up to the, the results of the game as well, your, uh, your, your awareness is very contracted when you're under pressure. So naturally, you're going to look for a safe haven. You're going to look to your mall. You're going to look to your scrum, which dominated. You're going to look to your short runners, your big, heavy power game, latched on, um, latched on uh, ball carriers. It's just it gets you over the advantage line. It gets you going forward. 
it's your safe place, it's what's working for you, yeah. so they, they, they stuck to their guns and it worked for them? Yeah, so the question is, have we seen development or growth in this, over the course of the 12 bobs? Very tough to gauge after that match. Well, well like, like we said, we were very much, pretty much under pressure. The second game that we won against France was the second time we won away from home. Mm. So this, this is the third time we won away from home against Italy, where we actually gone back to the, the, the old South African way of thinking, of saying, okay, what can we do? Use our big boys, get up, get up front, uh, play the pressure game, play the power game. I mean, we've got some few clips of showing how we actually weren't instructed on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're very organized about how we're going about it. Because our power play is all about having one runner, two cleaners over the ball, and then trying to stress the other team by working them across the field. I mean, you can already see that those two cleaners, that's their job. They have to they target, make sure that you're accurate on the ball. Again, we're going to go to another set of pod that's going to take the game. This is when we talk about the power yeah. game, yeah. because that is what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it all, uh, you know, the, the effectiveness of this is your ability to clean quickly. You have to get across the advantage line. So, uh, unfortunately, when you play teams that, uh, 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 that know that this is our go-to game they get off the line very quickly double hit. and they double hit that first ball carrier who's not shifting the pass have a look at this actually Pollard does well here and there's a, a good little dummy dummy switch from Creel that opens up a little half gap well, for him the dotted and, lines being yeah, like gain line and there's a gain line just the power of Pollard taking us through and then very good uh, play by by Francois Lowe because he's on the front foot has the ability no defender in behind pick and go into that hole was, was excellent even even on this Carlo, when when we didn't have that option because that's the first thing that we looked at yeah. the ref giving us that penalty yeah. so now all of a sudden that gives us that opportunity yeah. to see the space on our side it does and that 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 space and look at that defensive line that's been contracted because of the consistent hammering and hammering and hammering you're naturally going to contract the defensive line the space is in the back He's going for, the, uh, going for the long cross kick into space, which is right. He's got the advantage as well to do it. And um, badly ball. fielded by, uh, yeah. by Jaden yeah. Haywood there. But uh, opportunistic try. There's three, uh, three South African players in that picture. The way the mall's been set up as well, it's long. The ball's at the back. You're in complete control here. It's cohesive as well. It's, um, it's going forward. It's 15 meters from, um, from, where, from where that mall started. I mean, when, when you see this camp, I mean, this... I'm thinking now as a backline player, we're starting to walk up front. Now we're on the front foot. When the forward pack gives you that kind of ball, look at what we do. Yeah, I would think he's probably getting cold out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we want to get the guys yeah. to be a bit yeah. more, much flatter yeah. so we what, can explode. What I do like about this is that we, we didn't get it going against Ireland. Yeah. Uh, we did to a certain extent yeah. against France. We got it going very well against Italy. And if we do this against France, we're on the money. You mean against Wales? Wales. Against Wales. Um, yeah. Just kept yeah. the one thing I, I think we've got to reiterate is... Uh, is how poor Italy are at the moment. Yeah. So, you know, you can do anything you want against a really weak side. Uh, we, we must remember that last year, the All Blacks beat uh, this uh, Italian team the week before we played them, 68 points to 10 with their reserve team. So, uh, and, and after beating us, their next game that they won was 18-9 against Fiji uh, a few weeks ago. And so they've only beaten Fiji since beating South Africa. Yeah. I mean, they're a very, very weak international side. So of course we dominated with our forwards. But now taking it forward into the game we're playing against Wales, when, you, when, you, when you've got a covered roof, you've got to ask yourself, will one-off runners with two cleaners be enough to destabilize a Welsh yeah. side that will definitely come off the line mm -hmm. and will hope, will, they will hope to tackle us behind the advantage line. Mm -hmm. So we need to be a little bit more, a little bit more skillful than just one-off runners. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping that it was because of the weather that we mm -hmm. played simplistic rugby in this game against Italy and it was effective and well done. Mm -hmm. But we, we can't just play like that against Wales and hope to win, I don't think. So, so, so for us, just, just to put some pictures into what you're saying about Italy being so... Yeah. I mean, they lack imagination in yeah. so many ways. I mean, you, you see now the Italian attack. It's always surrounded and actually all, in, all is involved around Sergio Parisi. Yeah. If Sergio Parisi doesn't get the ball, not a match they sort of nowhere. happens. But now, this is what happens for me, Nick. I mean, if you get the line break, in an international game, and you go beyond the advantage yeah. line. Yeah. This is beyond advantage line. Yeah. You were talking about it, Carlos, nine-second ball time, you're supposed That's to it. score from there. Once, once that line breaks happen, you've got, you've got less than 10 seconds to convert that into, into a try. And if it goes more than two phases, the defences are set, everybody's settled, they're looking up at the picture in front of them, they've got, uh, it's a brick wall that you're hitting into. And then from there, after a line break, the first thing you want to do is get that ball into 10's hands and get that ball wide. It's a quick tap here from Sergio. 
He's under pressure. He's looking for something to do. 28-6 on the scoreboard. He's, Kick he's, for the touch. Go for the driving yeah, ball. Yeah. My, uh, I think, you know, Sergio has been the talisman of, uh, since, right since I was coaching in the team. He was 24 to mm. 28 when I made him captain of the side, and he was absolutely outstanding. He's long in the tooth now, and he can't take on the Springbok pack by himself. The, the, the problem is they've lost uh, the physicality in the forwards that Italy always used to have. Italy had a very, very good scrummaging pack. We had a very good mauling pack. We had a very good line-out. And we had a pretty good defensive uh, side. So when we held teams uh, to close scores, it was because we dominated an area of the game. Mm. Now, here, unfortunately, this Italian team doesn't dominate any area of the game. But doesn't that mean that you almost have to play a fairly negative type of game to keep the score down rather than if you look at this Italian team, 60% possession, yeah. and they didn't look threatening... Um, yes, but all. Yes, they don't have they don't have game breakers. You know they don't have anyone in the team who can make a difference. When that guy, when that uh, Italian player made the line break, uh, there, there's a there's a law in rugby that you have to instill in your players that once you get across the advantage line, and so you've got 15, 14 players behind you, they've got 12, 13 players in front of the ball, you know, they can't defend. You can't set up a ruck. That last mm. player must do everything to turn and make sure he gets a pop off the ground or an offload, and he's got to get quick ball. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the guy makes the break, he gets tackled by a last defender, mm. and it's five seconds before that ball comes out. In five seconds, we've set our defensive line. Wales won't allow us to do that, exactly. I guarantee you on no, Saturday. Kempo, a word on the South African defence this past weekend, because that line looked as though it was properly coming up together, not um, standing back too often. They really looked as though they were well organised this time round. It was very well organised. I think the you know, conditions played in their, their hands as well. Be you know, much more physical, getting off much more quicker, getting off that line. Can we do the same against Wales? We're going to have mm. to, particularly with the likes of Big Ed Fluff. He takes it right up to the line before he makes some very dangerous passes. So if we get decent line speed and then we can put Wales under pressure. Uh, we've got to dominate their pack first, that's without a question. But if we get that line speed going, the defensive orientation going, we can really put them to, to the sword. Yeah, and, I, and I agree with what you're saying, because when, when Wales is coming off the touchline, they always play that ball through the forwards. Mm. Bigger never takes that ball off the touchline. If you hit that first part of forwards really hard and get off that line and kill that at source, bigger straight away going to be on the back foot. Yeah. And then that certain second wave of defense comes up and shuts that line speed down completely. Yeah. But definitely another variation that they all go on, especially against New Zealand. They knew that they had Damien McKenzie at the back there. Bigger was putting up lots of high yes, bombs. We against. know how yeah, we are. Yeah. We've been vulnerable yeah. at the back yeah. there in the back three. I know we've got a fullback coming in at Warren Kalan, yeah. which yeah. I think is going to be ideal for yeah. us for the spring. Yeah. An additional that fullback. Cover. And you've got Dylan Lays on the other side that gives a bit of cover. The one thing about Bigger, which is an underrated aspect of his game, is he's a very good chaser of his own kicks. Yeah. So he'll put up a kick and he'll chase his own kick. Lots of flyers put it up. They leave the centres and they drop back to fullback. But if you remember in the World Cup quarterfinal, I think we were, when we played against Wales, he put one up, he caught it himself, offloaded and Wales scored against us. So we've got to worry. Our back three are going to have a bit of work to do. But we are um, getting slightly ahead of ourselves. We will take a look at the two uh, team selections, both the Springboks and for Wales, uh, for this weekend's coming matches. But this past weekend, a bunch of other international matches, as I said right in the beginning, some really interesting results. Take a look.